Hello friends, thanks for tuning in. I'm Big Matt and today we're going to be working on a TAC X1000R reel-to-reel. Uh, in some of my previous videos I've talked about the uh, the switches that control the tape speed and the reel size uh, on the TAC X1000R. This is the switch in question. Close in on it a little bit. It's a, uh, it's a two, two switch circuit board, has three plugs on the rear of it. Uh, what happens over time, the little tips on inside of these switches wear out occasionally. And this one is good, so when I press it in, it stays in. And when I press it again, it releases. This one, when you press it in, it stays in because I removed the spring that's normally associated with uh, pushing the switch back out. So when I press it in, it stays in. When I pull it out, it stays out. Normally, if if, I, if the spring was still in here, I would push this one in, and it would just push right back out without staying engaged. So my simple fix for these things is to just remove the spring and make it a manual uh, push it in to stay in, pull it out to stay out type of operation. Leave it to my good friend, Kurt Jacobs, to replicate this board with new switches, uh, new new uh, uh, plugs on a brand new circuit board. I have that uh, that board installed right now, but I wanted to go over with you the procedure uh, to make the replacement uh, if you're so inclined. This is the X1000 in question. I've taken it apart a couple of times just to make the procedure easier for anyone who wants to tackle this thing. I've got most of the screws removed, so this is the way your X1000R is going to be uh, looking before you get started. I want to take you, give you a look at the rear of the machine. And this is where the switch goes on to. There are two switches that control the tape speed and the tape size real size. And this is the board that uh, Kurt Jacobs has, uh, has designed. It has three plugs that go on the rear. I don't have them plugged in right now. Again, I've taken this thing apart a couple of times to try to come up with the, uh, the most uh, direct way of accessing those switches. The, the reason why it's a little bit difficult is because you need to remove this front plate before you can access the two screws that hold in that switch. So, I've, like I said, I've taken this thing apart a couple of times. It's tacked back together right now. All the screws aren't in, but this is the way yours is going to look. You will need to remove these six Allen screws around the perimeter of the machine. You've got three on this side, three on that side. You'll have to remove the reel tables, three screws to hold in the reel tables. And after you've removed those, you pull the reel tables off. Behind the reel tables, there are two other Phillips screws that you'll need to remove, and two more over here. Use an Allen, Allen wrench to remove the uh, head cover. I just have it tacked on right now. So. Next, you'll remove the pinch rollers. They simply unscrew with this cap. And you can keep all these parts in inside the uh, head cover. Do the same thing with the other pinch roller. Again, this plate is held on by two uh, Phillips screws, one on either side. And it just slips over the head assembly. This auto splicer switch, I just have it tech, I mean, it's sitting in there for now. But when you remove the front plate, it's, it pops out also. So it's probably best to go ahead and remove it from the start. It, it just pulls straight out. And there's a slider, a uh, little slide switch behind it. 
and just set that aside. Okay, now we're at this point. Uh, the tension rollers, I've already removed them. On most of these TEC units, you unscrew the cap on the pinch roller, and then you remove uh, these other uh, parts of the roller in, the, in this little base here. But on the 1000R, it's, you remove the screw from inside the machine. It's, it's right behind uh, this little opening. Remove the screw. The tension roller comes off. And once you've got the screw out, put it back in here for safe, inside the uh, little post for safekeeping. And do the same on the other side. Uh, you also have to remove the uh, auto reverse knob and the the pitch control knob. They're held on by the small Allen screws. Pop those guys out. Okay, and moving to the side of the machine, you'll need to disconnect this top uh, plug. And that goes down to the right tension arm. And that's going to give you enough room to where you can pull the uh, faceplate off the machine. There are one, two, three, four, five, six more uh, Phillips screws that need to be removed. Be careful when you do this. Leave one in uh, if you remove the other five and just be really careful when you remove the, the last one because this uh, head assembly and the capstan motor will start moving once you uh, remove all those and uh, we'll get ready to do that now. I need to remove this last uh, Allen screw that I have holding on the front plate. And we'll leave, <clears throat> I'm going to leave this guy right here because when I put it back together uh, this is one of the first screws I put in to uh, hold the unit uh, sort of in place once I uh, mount it back on the, the deck. And then the next screw that I'll put in is this one of these uh, uh, Phillips screws. I, I did this one because it's kind of centered and it holds that head assembly in place. But I'm going, I'm going to remove that now <clears throat> and this, this uh, assembly will start to move once I do that. And you can hold, you can support it by the motor at the rear of the machine as you're doing it. Okay, once you have that final screw out, uh, this this assembly will sort of back or tilt back. And when you begin to take the front plate off, uh, these two switches will. Uh, are going to stay in place and you're going to pull the front plate away from it. Okay, and just be real careful when you're pulling the front plate off. Just take your time with it. And if you have a helper around, that would be great. Be careful with the wires on top of the head assembly. You don't want to damage those guys. And just ease the front plate away from the deck. And you're not going to be able to pull it away because the wires are still connected on the other side of the uh, tension arm assembly. Let's take a look back here. So you can leave all those connected. If you have a helper, have them hold the front plate. As you remove these two screws, let's see if get my fingers working here. Okay, the two screws, you'll see them uh, once you get in there. One is here, right beside the switch, and the other one is just on the other side of this switch. Two small uh, Phillips head screws. You'll also need to use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull these these uh, cotter pins off the uh, switches. I'm going to demonstrate one of them. Just use some needle nose or hemostats or something like that. And grab the the uh, 
cotter pin and pull it straight up. And once you do that, that releases the knob that mounts onto the switch. You'll need to remove those before you can uh, pull this uh, new switch assembly out. And then to put them back on, I just use the same uh, needle nose or or whatever, and just slide it back into the, into the slot. And that keeps the knob in place. Okay, and then once you've done that, just uh, once you've re removed and replaced the switch with a new one, you'll plug in those three jacks, those three plugs in the back, and then you're be ready to begin your reassembly. And again, I found the easiest way to do this is once you get it lined up and you get it close to being in place, uh, insert a screw, a screw on this side to get it started. Uh, and uh, then lift up on that motor so you can put this screw in uh, right here. And my fingers touch it. Okay, and as you're lining it up, you want to make sure those two uh, timer switches go into place. This one seems like it's going on a lot easier now and if those one of those things come out it's no big deal just put it just get it to about this point and then you can screw in the uh, Allen screw here here at the bottom and you don't have to tighten it down just just get it started to sort of hold it in place certainly would be a, a lot easier with the helper, but that never happens. So we're going to get those two uh, switches in place. Just reach behind the unit. Probably have to stand up so you can see what you're doing. And uh, just reach right through and kind of guide those switches into place. Okay, we can get them close, then grab the motor and sort of rotate it up. Until you can get the holes aligned. Did I mention it would be a lot easier if you had two people doing this? not quite up there yet so Once you get that screw put into place, it'll be a lot easier to line everything else up. 
and it should go right together. And from there, it doesn't really matter the order that you put these things in. I like to go kind of diagonal. Okay, so this is the finished product. We're running at seven and a half inches per second in the reverse mode. We're going to drop it down to three and three quarters using our newly installed uh, switch. Switch stays engaged, and we're running at three and three quarter inches per second. We'll switch it over into the forward mode and check it at three and three quarter inches per second, and then at seven and a half inches per second. Okay, we'll also check our real size switch. It stays engaged as it should, and it releases also. Uh, installing the switch wasn't as difficult as I first envisioned when, for Kurt, when Kurt first told me about this uh, switch that he was making. I wasn't looking forward to installing it and you know checking it out and stuff, but after I did it a few times, uh, it became easier and easier. And I'm hoping that this video that uh, you can see that it's, it's not that difficult, a little bit time consuming, but everything's pretty much straightforward. And uh, if you have, if you need one of these uh, switches installed, you can certainly do it yourself. Uh, you can always pull the spring out like I've been doing in the past, but I don't think I'm going to do it, that anymore on this particular unit because a half hour invested, got a new switch or new switches installed. A uh, good piece of uh, a, a good addition to this uh, machine that'll. Uh, probably last another 40 years. Uh, definitely worth the time and effort uh, to uh, install this this new piece of uh, equipment. If you need one of these, uh, I can put you in touch with Kurt Jacobs. Just hit me up below, and and uh, you can get these things directly from him. Again, I'm Big Matt. This is the TXX1000R, and uh, thanks for watching this video.